You can't be authentic while pitching with passion and conviction without a lot of preparation. Hold on, you say. You always prepare. But like everything in life in general, and sales in particular, the devil is in the details. To get your pitch to echo, you need the advanced sales technique of properly framing your point of view. There are three parts to framing. Setting, that is the context around your conversation. Rail statement, that's R-A-I-L. That's the kind of statement that works like a track that a train travels on. It describes the train of thought that led you to your idea. And finally, restatement. When the customer demonstrates their understanding of what you said in their words. Welcome to the Food for Thought Lunch Break with Steve Bookbinder podcast, the show that gives you things to think about when you're trying to make more sales without all the seriousness of conventional sales talks. Enjoy and learn as he makes fun of sales training, salespeople, and sales trainers, including himself, all while giving you battle-tested strategies that work. Now, here's your host, Steve Bookbinder. Hey, thanks for joining me on your break. I'm always looking for ways to get more sales easier. Turning your break into a coaching break is a great way for me to help you get more sales easier too. One of my favorite quotes is, nothing gathers momentum like the growing sense of inevitability. William Sapphire used it to describe politics. I use it to describe the psychology behind why others will echo your sales pitch. You see support gradually build every time any new idea is introduced at work. People are curious about it at first, but fearful that change can introduce risk or more work or less pay or something else, possibly something bad. One can expect resistance to change in general, but there's a way to properly introduce an idea so it is accepted. Start with the right person, that is, the most influential, persuasive, and compelling, and get them to tell the next right person. The first right person, in a sense, recruits the next right person until a minority is vocal enough to recruit the others. That's a good way to think about echoing a sales pitch. Salespeople need to think about recruiting to our cause rather than merely getting the word out if they want to build a coalition of support within the customer's organization. Recruited to their cause may sound like too grand a mission name, but if you're not aiming to achieve that level of reaction and engagement, you're not aiming high enough. Why? Because we need customers to speak in support of our services with passion and conviction when they talk to their coworkers. When they do, they sound reasonable and logical and compelling. Their enthusiasm is contagious, which is the power behind the echo. You could see that contagious enthusiasm evolve into an echo in slow motion when you watch two co-workers discussing how your sale will help them. When the talker is contagious with enthusiasm, the listener mirrors. They give off positive nonverbal and verbal signs, which collectively encourages the other person to continue. It's a kind of social permission. The interested look on the listener's face, plus their posture and tone are all like green lights to the speaker, communicating, keep going, tell me more. Then, the listener is encouraged to repeat that exchange to others, enabling your sales pitch to get to new people when you and your original contact are not even in the room. In that example, you are two steps away from your own sales pitch. That is the promise of echo selling and the reason we made making your sales pitch echo the topic of today's lunch break coaching session. Today, we'll break down the echo moment where the echo begins into the three tactics it takes to get others to echo your pitch. Then I'll leave you with echo your pitch action steps you can begin this week. As always, let's begin with today's question. How can I make my sales pitch echo? The short answer is make sure you're authentic while pitching with passion and conviction. Let me expand on that. 
You can't be authentic while pitching with passion and conviction without a lot of preparation. Hold on, you say. You always prepare. But like everything in life in general, and sales in particular, the devil is in the details. To get your pitch to echo, you need the advanced sales technique of properly framing your point of view. There are three parts to framing. Setting, that is the context around your conversation. Rail statement, that's R-A-I-L. That's the kind of statement that works like a track that a train travels on. It describes the train of thought that led you to your idea. And finally, restatement. When the customer demonstrates their understanding of what you said in their words. Let's break down each, beginning with the setting. The perfect setting for echo selling is an unhurried conversation where your opinions are being solicited. From an echo selling point of view, unless the customer asks something like, what do you think, or words to that effect, your opinion, no matter how you state it, is unsolicited. To get the other person to give you an invitation to voice your opinion, you have to ask something like, can I tell you what I think? And when they say something like, yes, you state your opinion or rationale. Do you see what I'm doing? I'm reverse engineering the conversation so I can identify the trigger point that set the conversation in the right direction in the first place. Reverse engineering sales conversations requires sales experience and even more imagination. And it requires the customer plays along. The perfect moment for echo selling is a collision of a variety of factors which I can't fully control, but find more likely to occur in the following moments. A. Coffee moments. That's what I call the part of an in-person sales meeting that occurs before or sometimes immediately after the meeting when the customer asks, do you want water or coffee? As I walk with the customer to their kitchen or coffee machine, we talk. It's during this unofficial, pre-meeting, off-the-record conversation that I find both parties are more open to each other's ideas. So, show up a few minutes early to allow for this possibility and always be prepared to stay a little longer, just in case the moment comes up. And, most important, if you're debating whether or not to make your next meeting a phone meeting versus an in-person meeting, consider the echo potential of in-person meetings before you decide. B. Networking moments. Picture a networking event or a trade show when professionals meet, or an industry event where industry insiders are being quickly introduced to others. If you're in sales, you use those micro moments to squeeze in a quick and hopefully memorable sales pitch, like speed dating. Everyone is expecting the other person to introduce themselves and describe their product or offering in the fewest number of words. There's a rhythm to those exchanges. If I were introducing you to one of my colleagues, I'd say something like, this is so-and-so who is with the XYZ company, and then you would expand on that. That's right, I work with XYZ, and we help companies solve blah, blah, blah. The other person would smile, listen, glance at their watch, and politely excuse themselves. But if you broke the pattern by asking a question about the other person, they would be far more engaged. And then, if you follow their explanation with a question about something you are concerned about, for example, I'm so glad to meet you. I've been wondering how people in your business are responding to some of the changes I've been reading about. They would state their opinion, which would then set you up to ask, do you know what I think? And presto, echo, moment. C, LinkedIn conversations. The whole point of social media is to have a dialogue with another, but most salespeople want to use it as another email platform. Well, that's a mistake for a variety of reasons. From an echo selling perspective, we lose the advantage of communicating in a safe space that encourages a two-way conversation during which the customer asks you for your opinion. LinkedIn makes it easy to track your echo. Make sure they're echoing your intended message and not their negative reaction to your mishandling this social-slash-professional moment.
Okay, now that we have a setting with their undivided attention, let's explore the rail statement, which is the conversational line of reasoning that carries the customer along a path from their challenge to a desired destination with your solution in hand, like a gift given by the conductor to the train passengers. You can't simply probe to find the need, hear them state a problem, and deliver your memorized pitch as in... Okay, if you need blah, 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 then you need our service because we deliver blah, blah, blah. Simply matching your solution to their stated problem sounds like you weren't really listening for anything other than a trigger word that you've been trained to respond to with your memorized pitch. To sound authentic and genuine, you need to do your homework in advance of that moment. You need to do your own SWOT, S-W-O-T, analysis of your customer. Based on your research, your experience, and your insights, what are the customer's strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats? It's the effort of doing a SWOT analysis that lends credibility to your ideas because it reveals how you arrived at your conclusion in a way that seems inevitable. Of course your solution is right when you look at it that way. It's only after this analysis that you could put your pitch on the rail, so to speak, by saying something that sounds authentic, logical, and compelling, like, my team and I analyzed your company from a SWAT perspective, and we discovered, or I began to wonder about blah, 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 and I did some research and or talked to our experts and now realize that your company has the opportunity to do blah, blah, blah if we help you with our blah, blah, blah service. I've been working with companies in your business for many years and I always thought, A, but based on what I'm reading and hearing from the industry experts, I now realize we could be more helpful if we blah, blah, blah. While your big idea is always important, how you got to that idea is the grease that smooths over the path from your head to their head. The key is you have to know they agree with your pitch, but do they? Did you check after you told them your idea? I ask this because how many times does a salesperson tell me the story of their sale by saying something that sounds like this? Well, then I told them this, and then I told them that, and then I added this, that, and the other thing. I can't help but interrupt their story to ask, yeah, but what do the customers say? How did they react to you? The only reason a salesperson should ever talk is to get a reaction. You already know what you know, but what you're trying to learn is their reaction. Their reaction, when they agree with you and could say it even better than you, is what I call the restatement. Follow what I'm saying and look for this reaction the next time you're sharing your idea. Watching another person react non-verbally first is like watching a sped-up film of a flower opening. You see it coming. I like to wait until the person can hardly hold themselves back before I ask something like, I have a feeling you agree. What do you think? If your rail statement is really connecting, you'll first see the signs on their face. Their eyes widen, smile broadens, their head nodding in agreement even before you finish speaking. I like to watch that nonverbal reaction grow, which gives gives me the confidence of knowing they agree. And that's when I ask them to tell me their opinion. If I read them right, and they were in agreement, when it's their turn to talk, they'll take my message, the seller's message, and restate it in a clean, clear way. The perfect way to begin an echo. Okay, let's summarize. To get others to echo your pitch, make sure you create the right setting, which is best done in person. Prepare to deliver your rail statement that explains your SWOT analysis and how you came to the idea you have of how you can help the customer. And finally, confirm their agreement by giving them a chance to say your solution in their words. Their restatement of your pitch is what they will echo when they have an opportunity to share with others your idea, which is now their idea. Here are four actions you can take this week to begin getting others to echo your sales pitch. A. 
make appointments with people who are in a position to echo your pitch to their co-workers. The first right people in a line of right people. Making appointments with potential buyers may produce one sale, but creating the right conversations with potential echoers is the gift that keeps giving. B. Learn who your contact talks to internally, their peers, the departments that support them, the divisions they support. That's who they'll echo to. C. Practice doing a SWOT analysis, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats of your customers. At first, you won't know what to conclude, but with practice, you are building your case with facts and reasoning rather than merely matching your sales pitch to some trigger words you picked up during your needs analysis. And D, continue to learn how to echo your pitch by scheduling time for our next lunch break coaching session. Over the next few weeks, we'll alternate between talking about echo selling with interviews with sales and digital marketing leaders. Until next time, remember, I'm Steve Bookbinder, your sales coach. Please connect with me on LinkedIn. Check out our free playbooks and training and coaching offerings on dmtraining.net. And contact me ASAP if I can help your team get more sales or help you have a more successful sales career. Thank you for listening to Food for Thought. To get your free sales playbook, visit dmtraining.net forward slash podcast. And be sure to subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts so you don't miss any of Steve's jokes and helpful resources. Thanks again for listening. We'll see you next week.